good day folks. Welcome back to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, a real quick, simple setup that I love to do here in New Brunswick. It's a great one. It takes a pile of fur. So listen, stick with me real quick and I'm gonna show you how to, how to look for these and how to set them up. If you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We sure would appreciate it. And uh, as always, if you got questions or comments or you know anything you wanna, wanna suggest to us here on the channel, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. So whenever I'm out on the line or I'm out looking around, you know, scouting for new areas to set traps or to hunt or whatever it might be, I'm always looking for something really in particular, okay? So one of the things that I constantly look for when I'm out and about is an old beaver dam um, that has had beavers on it for a couple of years, multiple, you know, multiple years of beavers, because what you do is you get progressions of beaver dams, right? Like they start out and they flood an area and then the next year they'll move back or down or whatever it might be. Uh, what that does is it leaves an area that's, that's really quite large, uh, big swampy, large, you know, dead treed area on both sides uh, or on multiple sides of a beaver dam. Um, I just happened to come across one here and I was gonna do a video on it earlier on and I couldn't kind of see one that was really obvious. I, I, I use them all the time. Uh, but this one here is so obvious, I gotta show you, this is great. So this is typically a snaring setup. Now I have used traps on these sets before uh, on drowners, but uh, in a spot like this, this is, a, this is a guaranteed snare spot and you will take fur off of this all season long uh, if, you set it the, you know, if you set it up right. So just stick with me, I'll show you what I mean here. All right guys, so here's what we've got. Um, we've got this big old beaver dam here. Now this is old, 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 right? It's got the old cattails in it and this has been flooded back. They've got probably, I don't know what they've got flooded here, a couple, three acres anyway, uh, that's all flooded back. And you can see the type of, you know, it's real spongy. You can't really step in here. Like I stepped down in there and I'm stepping down, you know, quite a little bit. So uh, you, you're certainly not gonna walk in through here, right? And so this is the upper pond. Now I think there's another one farther up I haven't gotten to yet, but, uh, and then you turn this way and you've got the beaver dam, okay? So you got the beaver dam along here, the old, old dam. And then on this side, you've got the same type of thing, right? You've got that old, you've got the old big swampy marsh area all in through there. And then as far as you can see, the dark woods that are right there, there's another beaver dam, a smaller one, that would have initially flooded this area here or been a secondary dam. So what I look for when I find places like this, these are great. And they're great because animals especially small animals not not so much moose and deer because the moose is just going to roll through this and a deer will find a way around if he wants to um, but for the most part you've got fox coyote uh, bobcat bears you know anything that doesn't love to just get themselves wet they're looking for a way to get from over here to over here and this is going to be their main travel route, right? They're going to look for a way so that they don't have to kind of pick their way between the puddles and pick their way between the water. They're going to look for a road, okay? And what you find when you find an old beaver dam like this is you find a road. Now, I told you this one was pretty obvious. And uh, as you can see, it is like obvious to the 10th degree. I mean, look at the, look at the trail that goes straight across this beaver dam. I mean, it is, it is packed with tracks. There's... Uh, now that looks like a deer or a moose there that came up on the edge. That would be, that's a bear track. Looks like a bear cub from even last night, maybe. That's a pretty good little track. Um, right, so there's a, there's a raccoon track. That's a pretty good moose there, going the other way. Um, right, so there's a coyote track there, raccoon. Right, so there's tons of, there's tons of tracks all across here and you can see the trail i mean it is beat right down um with activity right so i mean you look along it it is no problem it is no problem to see just how heavily used this area is coming across here i mean this is an absolute gimme as far as snaring and trapping goes so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you what i would do here real quick uh with a setup as you're checking out these locations and you find you know, one of these old beaver dam crossings and uh, a place where animals are using it to get from one side to the other, you'll notice that, that most times you still have some good solid live growth, right? So here's a good maple they didn't cut. And there's two or three up along the edge here on the lower side of the dam. They're almost always on the lower side of the main dam. I'm not sure why that is, uh, but they are. 
and they probably were smaller maple that just didn't get cut or they did get cut and and uh, they just they built them into the dam you know they used the bases of them in their dam and then they didn't cut them for fear that it might weaken their dam or whatever so so this is what you're looking for right you're looking for one of these maple or one of these trees that's embedded in the dam close to the trail okay so once you have that then your setup is, is really a piece of cake. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna typically, I'm typically gonna put in four snares at each one of these locations. I'm gonna put one close to each end of the dam, out in the water a little bit, and I'm gonna put one on each approach. Okay, so it's real important to note that once an animal figures out that this is their bridge across these two big bodies of water, they're gonna use it pretty consistently. So as on, in the woods, on both sides here, just maybe 15 or 20 feet, off of the water's edge into the woods, you're gonna find a real good trail, a solid beat down trail, where animals are coming from all different directions, hitting that trail, turning, and coming out onto their bridge, which is this old beaver dam, okay? So I'm definitely gonna put a snare in the woods on each side of this bridge, each, you know, and I'm gonna put two right on the dam, okay? So the ones in the woods are pretty straightforward. If you wanted to see a, a video on just how to make a regular trail set, I've got one on the channel, uh, maybe two, you never know. Now, I'm just gonna use one of my regular, uh, what I call my farm snares, just my regular snares here. And uh, if you haven't yet seen the video on how to make these, it's on the channel as well. Uh, but if you're into buying your snares, I uh, put a link in the description down below to uh, the trapping supply place where you can buy your snares and locks and, and all that fun stuff uh, for, making, for making these. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and check out the link down below. Just gonna spool off some wire. Okay, so I typically um, wire these directly to the tree, okay, directly to something solid, but I try to wire them up high so that uh, I get a good tangle point and uh, stuff has a good, quick, clean kill, okay? Okay, just like that. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire this to my tree. Now, everybody does this a little bit different. I mean, you can use uh, you can use just this wire as a support wire and use a long snare, like a, a 54 inch snare or whatever it is you wanna do. Um, however it is that you like to set your snares, that's, that's what I would put here. Um, but regardless of how you like your snares or what your snares, you know, what you like them to do. And again, you set your height set your height of your snare for whatever it is that you want to catch okay so all you're gonna do is find a good solid piece on the lower side of this dam you're gonna hang your snare out in the middle of the trail and the only other thing that I do is because you will get moose and deer that will walk this trail and they'll knock your snare off sideways you also get some bears too um, that'll come across here like there's already bear tracks on this one so I just grab an old beaver stick from the from the lower side of the dam a pretty good solid one and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that, just gonna lean it, stick it down in the mud a little bit, if you can, and lean it up against the tree. Okay, so what I've created now, okay, is I've created a, an area where a smaller animal, like, a, like a, a fox or a coyote or a bobcat or whatever, they're gonna come up on this, they're not gonna wanna walk around on the water side, okay? They don't want to get wet, so they're going to they're going to come right through this middle. Okay, I'm going to set my snare for my target animal. Target animal's coming down the right down the beaver dam. They see this. They're definitely going through here, and I'm going to have myself a fox or a coyote, maybe even a bobcat here in no time. 
okay? Now, a deer or a moose comes down here, they come up to this angled piece, and they're like, well, I'm not ducking through that, I'm going this way, because they just take a step around, right? Uh, same as bears, right? You get a good bear, he's gonna come down here, he's gonna take the lower side, he's just gonna step around this and keep going. So, you know, 95% of the time, the snare doesn't get harmed or touched, uh, unless it's from your target animal. Again, like I say, I'm gonna put uh, one on the other end, almost identical to this, and then one on each approach. So um, typically four or five snares for every one of these that I can find out in the woods. Anyway, well, I hope this helps you out. Uh, I just wanted to show it to you because it was super obvious, you know. I use quite a few of these, you know, any, anytime I'm out and about anywhere on the line, if I can find those two big bodies of water separated by the old beaver dam, uh, it's, uh, these are golden and you will take fur on them. So, hope this helps you out. Until next time, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.